Arena, where today it is Big East women's basketball between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Creighton Blue Jays. We welcome you courtside. They give us good seats for these games. Alongside John Fanta, I'm Donnie Barnes. And John, it's a really good matchup today between two teams that both seem to be getting better as this Big East season rolls along. And two teams that are right in the middle of a packed Big East standings. Creighton in a tie for third. Seton Hall in a tie for fifth. Just one game separates them, which makes for an outstanding matchup. Seton Hall, a team that have won three in a row and four of their last five. And that coming despite recently dismissing their leading score. Yeah, Denasia found getting dismissed, but that just means Jaquan Jackson has stepped up for the Pirates. It's a Seton Hall team, Donnie, that loves to run the floor. They lead the Big East in steals per game with over 11, and they're going to get out on the break. That's what the Pirates do best, and Tony Bazella will look for them to do that today. The key player for the Seton Hall Pirates is the players had to step forward in the absence of their previous leading scorer, Inya Butina. She has really come on on both ends of the floor lately. A Juco transfer that is shining. She not only is able to score the ball, but six assists against the Providence Friars on Friday. She initiates this attack, and she's the reason why the Pirates have been able to find a groove. The Creighton Blue Jays are a team that have won their last two games and three of their last four since being blown out a few weeks ago at home against DePaul. They're improving as well. And Jim Flannery's really happy with what they did defensively against St. John's on Friday night, holding the Red Storm to just 39 points. It's a Creighton team that has had trouble on the glass. That's what Coach Flannery's looking for them to continue to improve. But they've got two great offensive weapons, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them again today. And one of those big weapons is Sydney Lamberty. She what? has led the way for them this year. She's been so good at initiating the offense for Creighton. One of the best in the Big East at dishing it off time and again, and Lamberty can also stroke it from deep. A senior who has progressed throughout her career and now has taken over as the main star for this team. As this season goes on, they're going to go as far as she takes them. You always select three keys to a game like this, John, and today you've selected tempo, front court clash, and three-point shooting. What are you seeing there? Seton Hall is not the same team when they're contained in the half court. And that's what Creighton did to them in the first matchup. When the Pirates can't get out into transition, Donnie, they're just not a team that can execute the same way. They were held to four fast break points in the first meeting with Creighton. For the Blue Jays, Audrey Faber's the second best scorer in the Big East Conference. So it is so crucial for the Jays to get her going down low. But today she faces one of the Big East best defenders in the Pirates, Shadeen Samuels. Two teams bunched together in this very competitive Big East Conference, so something's got to give this afternoon. We'll see what happens with our opening tip-off and our basketball game coming up next here on the Big East Digital Network. Just about set for basketball on this Sunday afternoon, the Creighton Blue Jays and the Seton Hall Pirates. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for both these teams. And John, the starting five rolled out by these two head coaches. What are you seeing? Tony Bazella's main concern for Seton Hall is how they can stop Jalen Agnew because he thinks that Agnew's got a size advantage. He will try to put Deja Winters on her, but Agnew, the reigning Big East freshman of the year, let's see if she can take advantage with her size today on the drive. Mentioned those Big East Conference standings. They are all bunched together. These two teams right in the thick of it. The Blue Jays six and four in the Big East. The Pirates five and five. And both, as we said in our open, playing well lately. Seton Hall started 0 and 3 in conference play. It was their third straight loss to start league play. That came at Walsh Gym against Creighton. So the Pirates trying to get back at the Blue Jays. These two teams have split their meetings since conference reconfiguration at DJ Sokol. Our opening tip at center is controlled by the Blue Jays. And off we go on this Sunday. Creighton, of course, in the home whites, trimmed in blue. Seton Hall, the blue tops and bottoms. Catch and pivot at the left elbow by Audrey Faber. Tosses it out for a three that's in and out from Jalen Agnew. Seton Hall with their first possession of the afternoon. 
And it's Inya Butina, our key player, just highlighted in our open, doing the primary ball handling for them. Now Shadeen Samuels. Back to Butina on that left side. Samuels, she'll take the two. That's off the heel of the rim and the easy rebound for Jalen Agnew. So Creighton looking to open the scoring. Here comes a long two from that corner. That's a little short. And rebound chased down by Kwani Jackson. Front court pass dangerous, but somehow into the hands of Samuels. Now Seton Hall will reset just about a minute into this first quarter. Ooh, good pass there by Jackson for a layup that's missed by Shadeen Samuels. Good chance there, still scoreless. That's the look you want, and you see the Pirates. Any chance they get to accelerate the tempo, they'll try to. Still seeking the first points of this game. Lamberty for Creighton. Little lob pass for an open look. Bailey Norby gets her own rebound, puts it back up and scores, plus a foul. And first blood to the Blue Jays this afternoon. A senior who has done so much throughout her career, has had several starting lineup appearances throughout her career, and has delivered time and again. We see head coach Anthony Bozella in his fifth season at Seton Hall as the free throw misses in and out. Tony Bozella recently celebrated his 400th career win in his distinguished coaching career. Yeah, and he's changed the expectation at Seton Hall. Three postseason berths in four years. It was Butina missing a running lay in attempt. Creighton good interior defense there. They lead by two. Dangerous pass there, intercepted. And running the floor the other way for Seton Hall, Deja Winters ties the game at two. A sophomore who progresses game in and game out and can also stroke it from deep. Seton Hall, a team that will force quite a few turnovers. They also turn the ball over quite a bit themselves, averaging about 17 turnovers a game. They almost forced another one there. That was, again, Winters jumping that passing lane. Here's the stat of the day. Seton Hall has outscored their opponents 196 to 124 in fast break points this year. That's plus 72. Wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> There's a three from the left angle. Sydney Lamberty puts Creighton in front by five, or five to two, that is. Is there anybody better than Jim Flannery at coming out of an inbounds pass and getting a good shot? He is an offensive technician. It certainly worked there. Right elbow jumper, left short, rebound fought for, and claimed by Lamberty. She's all over the place as usual for Creighton in this first quarter. Outlets to the right for an open three. That's short. And an over the back foul there. As we see, Jim Flannery, he recently celebrated his 300th career win at Creighton in his 16th year with the Blue Jays. And there have been peaks and valleys to this conference season for both these teams, but Coach Flannery has remained calm, composed. That's his personality, and he says he loves the experience of his group with Faber, Lamberty, Agnew. There's leaders that can get it done in March for the Jays. Routina for Seton Hall, Jackson. Trying to drive along that right side of the lane. Good denial by Bailey Norby. Forcing it back around the perimeter. Butina trying to drive. Five on the shot clock. Butina, tough shot. Gets it to fall. Crafty in everything she does. Inya Butina, that's a really tough shot. And you'll live with that if you're Creighton's defense. Absolutely. So the lead is one for the Blue Jays. Pull up two from that free throw line. That's short, but Lamberty gets her own rebound. And then outlets for a three from Norby. That is off the mark. Actual shot was taken by Faber after a pass from Norby. So a one-point Creighton lead. Chance for Seton Hall to take their first lead of the day. Tina out to Samuels. Jackson almost lost her dribble there. Hmm. Little up fake. And then the jumper too strong. Rebound tipped toward that baseline. Flagged down by Maya Melman. Seton Hall with two ball reversals on that possession and all off screens with their posts. They are a huge screen and roll team with Kimmy Evans as well as Shadeen Samuels. And I'm fascinated here on the defensive end, Pirates are face guarding Audrey Faber with Samuels. Open look for Norby that she splashes. And Norby's been open quite a few times in this early going. So a 7 to 4 Creighton advantage. Seton Hall working it around the edge. Blue Jays took the first meeting between these two teams, 68-51. Jackson into the lane, forced backwards, she traveled. We see that interior defense again for Creighton. 
keeping Seton Hall around the edge as we take a look at our referees today. That's Janine Pence. We also have Brandon Enterline and Rod Lettington in the black and white stripes today. So seven to four in favor of Creighton. Jim Flannery looking a little confused on that Creighton sideline. And Olivia Alger checks in for Creighton. Tony Bazella said that it, it is an absolute must for Seton Hall to stop her. She had 16 points, five assists in the first meeting between these two. There's a three from that left corner. That's off the mark from Melman. Yeah, Bazella was very candid with us before the game. He said she kicked our butt last time. He didn't use the word butt either. <laughs> He's always candid. <laughs> Here's a two from the lane, that's short. And again, that interior defense of Creighton forcing some tough looks by the Pirates. And Bazella felt that Seton Hall needed to hit seven to 10 threes today. Thus far, Pirates are trying to attack, they're not getting much. Here's a drive into the lane, then kick out to an open three from that left corner. Off the back iron from Melman. So still just a three point Creighton advantage over halfway through this first quarter. Fun start and a really good pace. Routina off the hop to Samuels. On the little screen. There's a pull up two off the mark from Deja Winters. Now Creighton looked to push the tempo with Sarda. Temi Sarda worked around to the right corner for a three. Bang! 10 to 4. Creighton. Audrey Faber on target this time. That's why the Jays are one of the best teams in the Big East. In assists, they move the ball so well and consistently. Doesn't matter who the opponent is. Now Seton Hall really need a bucket. Lutina along that baseline, forced out. Legally so, she turns it over. It'll be Creighton ball when we come back. Good defensive start for the Blue Jays, leading Seton Hall 10-4. They are watching Big East women's basketball here on the Big East Digital Network. Creighton on top with three minutes and 54 seconds to go in this opening quarter at DJ Sokol Arena. Well, these two head coaches, they're both veterans. They've both been around a long time, and this will come as a, as a surprise, John, but both of them like to talk a little bit, sometimes loudly on the sidelines. That's what we saw in the first meeting between these two earlier this season. Take a listen. And Donnie, it was back and forth in game action. Pirates got off to a solid start behind Shadeen Samuels. But the mic'd up portion of this broadcast, so cool to see the coaches in the locker rooms, to see complete access, Bailey, see them communicate. Right hand! Good job! Nice job, Liam! Jim Flannery working on that gum while yelling, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> Multitasking at its finest. You, you see how much coaching is in a game that goes beyond the X's and O's, but personality, you got to have it because your team's going to reflect that swagger. Yeah, both these head coaches have that. And they're both very candid with their players, with media members, both great coaches to talk to before a game. There is Tony Buzella. I would assume he was the busier of the two head coaches during this last time out. Some adjustments needing to be made by Seton Hall as Creighton has really stymied them on the offensive end of the floor so far. Seton Hall got two bunnies at the rim to start this game in the first minute and a half, and they couldn't hit them. When you're on the road, you must cash in on those types of opportunities, and he's got to be telling that to his team. There's Jim Flannery still in the huddle with his team. He's really had his work cut out for him this year. They lost some key players from that squad that were so good last season, and they're building their way back up. Well, and I said earlier that there's leaders. 
there's leaders on the court in terms of scoring. In terms of all the numbers, this Creighton team has them. They move the ball. They're tremendously unselfish. They might be a little bit too unselfish at times. Coach Flannery's looking for those leaders to shine in terms of being vocal, doing those types of things. Tommy Sarda kicking it out. Little dribble drive. Then from the right corner, Agnew along the baseline. Throws it out for a wide open look. Again, too strong. What a good offensive rebound by Olivia Elger. Talked about how well she played against Seton Hall the first time they met. The ball movement is infectious. Three passes already make it a fourth off the rebound and a fifth, Donnie. Wide open, Sarda knocks it down. And all Creighton in this first quarter so far. Sharing is caring in Omaha. <laughs> Game high, nine point lead for the Blue Jays with three minutes to go in the first. Seton Hall have got to find something quickly here to hang around early. Just in the game, this is Jayla Jones pack, and now a travel call on Kwani Jackson, who we've not really seen a lot of in this first quarter. This is such good ball movement, and Sarda has really progressed in her freshman year. Had a great performance at Xavier on Monday in the overtime win for the Jays. Here's a three ball from the right corner, knocked down again. That is Elger once more, 16 to four Blue Jays. All business by the Jays thus far. Their offensive execution has been good. Guess what? Their defense has been even better. They've completely cut off Seton Hall from anything easy. Nicole Jimenez, tough step back too. An air ball tipped out of bounds by Seton Hall. It'll be Blue Jays basketball as Selena, or Jayla Jones pack that is, trying to tip that one off a Creighton player, unable to do so. Seton Hall needs to get Jaquan Jackson going. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it, and they, they put her back in the game. Thus far, she's scoreless, but the Pirates need to have her get into a rhythm. The key for them is they can quickly get back into a game because their ability to run the floor, they're scoreless for the last five minutes because of Creighton's defense. Elger probing at that defense. Here's Agnew knocking down another tray. An exasperated timeout call by Tony Bozella. Creighton 19, Seton Hall 4. Just a dominant first eight minutes of this game for the Blue Jays. It's a 14 to nothing run now since it was just five to four. Now the Jays can really kill you from three point land. They average over nine per game. This is their MO. They know how to spread the wealth as well. We're seeing them connect from all cylinders right now as five different players have scored a three. You really can't defend that. That's how balanced they are. Let's look at the stats coming into this game. As the Blue Jays obviously have affected those a little bit with their 19 points so far, but you see how evenly matched these two teams are on paper. These two teams play similarly in their ability to move the basketball and shoot the three. They both shoot it fairly well relatively to the conference statistics, and they both score about the same amount of points, but Jim Flannery and Tony Bazella have both tried to get their teams better defensively. Thus far, Creighton's showing the progress. Crowd didn't like that foul call as it goes against Creighton's Alley Green. How good was she on Friday night? Yeah, 14 points against St. John's in that 53-39 win for the Jays on Friday. A good game and a game that was very offensively challenged in general. Now in the post, Evans called for an offensive foul, putting her arm into Jalen Agnew. This is a big mental test now for this Pirates team. See Kimmy Evans called for putting that forearm into the defender. It has now been nearly four and a half minutes since Seton Hall scored. Lamberty on the drive, trying to shovel it under the hoop. It gets there somehow, but then missing from close quarters was Allie Green this time. Now Jimenez trying to push the tempo the other way, throws it at the hoop, looking for a foul. Instead, she commits the charge. Out of control on the drive, and that's a sign of frustration by Seton Hall. When they look to attack, they're not getting anything going. Jimenez trying to create something in transition there, but it's a great job to get back and get her feet set. 
by the Creighton defender. And Seton Hall with five turnovers thus far. And Tony Bosella said before the game to us, we're going to have to hit at least seven, maybe up to ten three-pointers to win this game. They've not hit one. They've only made two buckets thus far. Here's a three from that right corner and another one for Creighton. How about it? 17 nothing run. This time, Brooke Kissinger. It is indeed 17 unanswered points for Creighton over the last four minutes and 44 seconds. My goodness. They're threatening to run away with this one. Even though we still have over three quarters of the game left, another offensive foul against Seton Hall. And this is unraveling for the Pirates. Uh, in a long jam of the Big East standings, where only one game separates these two teams, the magnitude of it going into this game has a March-like intensity. You learn who the real contenders are in games like these along the road. There's Lamberty, pull up two, got it. Sydney Lamberty from outside the right of the lane, a 20-point Creighton lead, a 19 to nothing run. It's one of the best players in the Big East, getting off of a roll and hitting about a 13-footer that wasn't really contested. That's what Lamberty wants to do. She can do it in her sleep. Biloxi in and out. Seton Hall just cannot buy one. And Creighton can hold for the final shot of a dominant first quarter. How about the Jays? After holding St. John's to 39 points on Friday night, the defensive intensity of this team keeps on growing. Lamberty probing into the lane. Lamberty had it knocked off her knee and out of bounds. Good defense there by the Pirates. 2.2 seconds on the clock. Let's see if they can make something happen here before the end of the quarter. They have to go the length of the floor as Kwani Jackson to inbound just skips it in to Butina. Pirates content to regroup for quarter number two. Wow, what a performance by the Blue Jays over these opening 10 minutes. Creighton 24, Seton Hall 4. Let's see if the Pirates can respond with the second quarter next on the Big East Digital Network. Yeah, everything's great. Getting ready for the start of the second quarter at DJ Sokol Arena, where it has been all Creighton over the first 10 minutes. 24 to 4, they lead Seton Hall. Honey Barnes alongside John Fanta. And John, after both teams got off to a slow start offensively, Creighton seemingly couldn't be stopped on offense over the final six minutes of that quarter. It started with the defense, and then the Jays spread the wealth. Six different players with a three-pointer. The ball movement here, tremendous. Seven assists on nine field goals. Well, everything went the Jays' way. Now the Blue Jays shot just about 50% from the floor in that first quarter, 9 of 19. And they were led by five points from Sidney Lamberty, as you said, so well distributed in their points. Nobody had more than five, but just about everybody got in on the axe. And for Seton Hall, just 2 of 11 from the floor, and they turned it over six times. It's interesting because
because Coach Flannery told me earlier this season he was concerned about his level of depth, and he said, I'm going to look for us to try to increase that somehow. Kissinger, Sarda, and then primarily Elger. Elger's really that sixth man in this conference that's so dangerous. But to get production out of those two as well is huge. There's Jackson. Samuels from the free throw line again closed out so quickly. Jackson looking for her first points. In and out, no. Wow, do they have her zoned in on? Well, up fake by Agnew. And Sydney Lamberty, who pulled the string so effectively for Creighton in that opening quarter. Lamberty. A little drive by Kissinger. Let's it go. Missed it short. Rebound battled for. And a foul against Creighton. It's going to be Audrey Faber. This is a test of wills now. If Seton Hall can chip away, you look at this quarter and you say to yourself, let's get it down to 10. That's got to be the goal here. But for the Pirates, you ask yourself, on a difficult road weekend where you're coming from Providence to Omaha, do they have the energy? Do they have that mental will? It's one of the difficult things about this Big East Conference, isn't it? Is we see Samuels with a tough look. That won't go. She gets her own rebound. Out for a three from Jackson. Yes, and there's Seton Hall with a bucket. Kwani Jackson on the board. It's but, a grind, there's no doubt about it. But to your point, this weekend is something that the teams have to go through. Playing Providence and Creighton is the challenge of it. It prepares you for what you're going to go through in March. Agnew, a little contested pass, found its way to Lamberty. In the post, Faber almost tied up there. Crowd wanted a foul. What do they call three seconds? Yeah, crowd screaming for a contact and a foul there, but instead it was Faber in the lane too long. So Seton Hall with the bucket, then they get a stop, trying to build some kind of momentum. Still a lot of ball game left. No doubt. And for Seton Hall, I think the primary concern is they're not getting much in the paint. So if they're going to rally, it's probably going to come beyond the arc. And that was where they struggled, among other things, against Creighton in their first meeting. Just two three-pointers in that game where they lost 68-51. Butina driving. Nice left-handed lay-in goes down. There's five in a row for Seton Hall, showing signs of life early in this second quarter. The lead down to 15 for Creighton. Blue Jays looking for a bucket. Faber almost dribbled it off her foot. And then a stuff loose along the, the baseline. It's out of bounds to the Blue Jays. We were screened by a referee there. I couldn't see who got that block, but here's Boutini with a beautiful drive. With the left hand to a Juco transfer who's not only added something on the court for the Pirates, but off the court as well. A real culture builder. Howell called on Seton Hall there. That's Kwani Jackson, very upset at that decision. We'll take another look at it. You seemed a little puzzled by this call too, John. The inbound tough. again. A long two, I believe. That's too strong. I believe her foot was on the line, but another offensive rebound for Creighton, but unable to put it home on the second attempt, Olivia Elger. Those offensive boards, another thing that killed Seton Hall in the first meeting between these two teams. There's a pull up two, yes, and here come the Pirates. Kwani Jackson has five now in this quarter. It's a 7-0 run. It's Creighton who are looking for a response, and there's a foul drawn by Temi Sarda. Good aggressive move to the hoop, and she'll shoot free throws. That's passing up a good shot for a better one and gets to the line because of it. That's a freshman making strides. This talented underclassman group that the Blue Jays are bringing through, along with a few veterans on this squad who've led the way this year. Temi Sarda, 5'9", freshman from Lakeville, Minnesota, and bounces that first free throw in. Jim Flannery has stressed throughout the season, I need to get better production out of my fives. Bailey Norby has done that thus far. And Norby back on the floor for Creighton. Both free throws sunk by Sarda. Back to a 15-point lead for Creighton as they halt that 7-0 run by the Pirates. The 
Martina, one-handed pass for Samuels. Good step to the hoop, beating defenders there and finishing with the right hand. She is gritty, and Coach Pazella has loved the improvements that Shadeen Samuels has made for this Seton Hall team. So a 9-2 burst by the Pirates, and then they pick off a pass, and here comes Butina. She finishes, as it looked like Temi Sarda might get back to contest that lay, and Sarda decided against it at the last moment. Well, I said in the opening of the quarter, get it down to 10. Look at what Seton Hall's done in the first four minutes. It's amazing how quickly momentum can change. They've just about cut that lead in half. And how did Creighton answer? Good baseline dribble. There's a response from Sydney Lamberty. The calming presence of Lamberty. A sign of her experience level. She now is the, the main star for this Creighton team, their playmaker, right there, another example. But Seton Hall looking so much better in this second quarter. Butina again penetrates, trying to dish off, now loose, and a tied up ball. The arrow is in favor of Creighton. <laughs> Creighton basketball leading by 13. And it was a 20-point lead at the end of one. 11 to four, Seton Hall so far in the second quarter. It's a big defensive stand here for the Pirates, trying to keep that momentum on their side. Triple drive, Temi Sarda. That one bounces out. Looked like it was gonna fall through, but not a kind pop off those rims. Butina the other way for the Pirates, approaching the midway point of the second quarter. They're just daring Shadeen Samuels to shoot that three. <laughs> That's not her game. Jackson will, though, and she sinks it. And there is Kwani Jackson reducing that deficit to 10, just as you said, John. Kwani Jackson's got game. Seton Hall, six for their last six. We're heating up in Omaha. And we'll see if Seton Hall can cut into that lead further when we come back. It is Big East women's basketball here on the Big East Digital Network. All right, well, this is turning out to be an interesting game. Yeah, yeah. Any glad. thoughts? I mean, it's entertaining. I'm glad Seton Hall are making a game of it here in the second. I was, I I was worried there, but. I know. Yeah. Such a beautiful shot of a beautiful campus here at Creighton University. But it's Seton Hall who have had the better of this second quarter so far after the Blue Jays led by 20 at the end of one. Seton Hall all over the Jays in the first half of the second jump. Yeah, the Pirates 14 points in the first five minutes of the second quarter. And it's because of Jaquan Jackson. The pull up there, that's good defense. It's just better offense. Jackson led Seton Hall at Providence on Friday, and she's got to stir the drink for them again. Eight points all in the second quarter for Kwani Jackson after she was held without a point in the first 10 minutes. 22 points on Friday at Providence. She did a little bit of everything. Hit three threes, an efficient seven for 10 from the field. Went five for five from free throw land. 
It's a player who, Louisiana Tech transfer, now in her senior year with Denasia Fountain getting dismissed from the team. It just means Jackson's presence has to be all that much more. A little backcourt pressure there by Seton Hall. That was Winters swatting the ball out of bounds. And Seton Hall liked to press. They did it a lot more in the first meeting against Creighton. Another foul on Winters. A little too much pressing that time. Even when you're a good pressing team, you have to be a little careful, especially when you don't have as much depth anymore. You have to pace yourself over a long game. And Creighton's got the ball handlers to get through the press. Almost created an open look there out of that press. And now Lamberty dumping it off. Fumbled under the goal. Somehow they get it back. Good save there by Allie Green. Lamberty skipping it along to Elger. Back in the post to Green. Back out to Elger. Takes the three. Off the mark. Good rebound under the hoop. And then one handed out of danger by Shadeen Samuels. Big East physicality from the Pirate forward. An open look from the corner. That bounces and won't go down. A foul call. That's going to be on Creighton, I believe. And Samuels was sent to the floor. Blue Jays looked like they were going to have a rebound, but just a little too much, too much Big East physicality this time. <laughs> Back and forth we go, partner. Now we're deep into January. We're on that road to March. It's a grind. It really is. Yeah, and if Creighton thought they were going to have an easy one after that first quarter, Seton Hall are letting them know that is not going to be the case. 14 to 4, they've outscored the Jays in the second quarter. I think we're going to have a, a replay here. As the officials are going to look at that monitor on the sideline. Again, Rod Lettington and Brandon Enterline, two of our officials today, the two that appear to be taking a look at that replay. Again, it was 24 to 4, Creighton the end of one. This is exactly what the officials are looking at. They have this same feed. I'm not sure what they're reviewing here. Well, Samuels was down and it looked like she was sort of holding on to her head for a moment. So it looks like whatever they're looking at happened just before that mark. Are they looking at a possible flagrant foul potentially here? That's the only thing I can think of. That's the only thing that they would be looking at in this instance. Because I don't think that they're looking at who the foul's on. Let's see here. Ooh. I don't think that was intentional, but that was some heavy contact between an elbow and a face there. It is, but that's a player boxing out and yeah. going for a rebound. I don't see the intention of an elbow, but we've seen this where even though there's not an intention. If the elbow is is on that face and hitting in the head area, that the officials have called flagrant fouls. Again, this is what the officials are looking at. That's Allie Green who is involved for Creighton. And again, I don't think she intended to harm anybody there at all, just trying to box out and get good positioning under the rim. So now those officials are going to huddle and discuss so as we saw in those replays, as they were seeing, there's another angle of it. Tough to ascertain any real intent there. They're going to call both coaches over, Jim Flannery and Tony Bazella. You always look to see which head coach looks irritated or upset by what's being said in a situation like this. Both of them fairly poker-faced. Oh, it looks like there's going to be free throws taken here All right. for just that. So I guess they did call a flagrant. It is a flagrant one. So two free throws for Jaquan Jackson, and she sinks the first. Boy, that's a big call. Chance for Jackson to cut the lead to eight. And she does. So from a 20-point Creighton lead, it's now just eight points, 16 to four. Seton Hall have outscored the Jays in this second quarter. And now Seton Hall will have the ball back. So again, instead of just a foul on the floor, two free throws plus the ball for the Pirates. And the intention wasn't there as we saw and said, but that elbow contact in the head area, that cost it. Gutina, the little teardrop, yes! A six point lead now for Creighton. 
18 to 4 is the run for Seton Hall in this second quarter. Boutina was not getting the lane in the first quarter like that. That is one of the few open looks inside that Seton Hall's had. Now Creighton trying to rediscover their mojo after they were so utterly dominant in those first 10 minutes. Incredible turn of events in Omaha. Elger out to Lamberty. But the defense so much better for Seton Hall in this quarter. And a block from behind, a clean block. And Seton Hall can cut into that deficit further. Toward that right corner, open look. No. But then tipped out of bounds by Audrey Faber. No save from going out of bounds. What a great play by Elger. And Creighton keep the ball. Huge play there, but then a tie up. And Seton Hall have the arrow, and they'll get it back. And the crowd are livid that there was no foul called there, but the Pirates continue to hold all the momentum. What a great save to keep that ball in bounds. Looked like Creighton had it. Look at the bodies on the floor. And again, that was Kwani Jackson. Talked about how she has to lead this team. Here is Jackson for three. Oh! It's a three-point game. Kwani Jackson forced the tie-up and then hits the three right out of the inbounds. Goodness! A 21-4 run for Seton Hall. Lamberty looks to answer. Can't do it. Rebound tipped a couple times, loose. Butina scrambling for it, throws it from her back to Philoxy, two on two. Philoxy out to Jackson, passed up the three this time, under the rim, Samuels waits and scores. It's down to one. What an answer by the Seton Hall Pirates. And what a game we have now. That's out of bounds to Creighton. I don't know what Tony Bazella said to his team after the first quarter, but my goodness, are they on fire right now. I wish we had, this is the all access game. <laughs> yeah, you'd love to hear what was said in that huddle, wouldn't you? Whatever it was, it sure worked. Creighton need a hoot now. Can't get it to go there, and there's a foul called on Winters going over the back of Olivia Elger. Again, it's Elger in a big spot for the Blue Jays, making something happen under the rim, hustling for those loose balls and offensive rebounds. Elger has really come on as this season has progressed. Jim Flannery was talking about her yesterday, how much she's helped this team become such a key player on it. There is Elger passing up the three. Creighton much more tentative. There's a one high off the glass, way off the mark from Sarda and a chance for Seton Hall to grab the lead. Who would have thought that at the start of this quarter? No. Unbelievable. Samuels. And then Jimenez lets it fly. And it is a one point lead for the Pirates. From 20 down, they lead 29-28. It's as if Creighton's defense just completely took its foot off the gas pedal after the first quarter. Creighton only allowed 39 in the entire game on Friday against St. John's. They've given up 25 in this quarter. Samuels, right of the lane. Out to Jimenez. She has no remorse, but that one wouldn't go. And a foul called on whom? That is on Samuels. That is her second. And the crowd is yelling for a flagrant. But just a foul on Samuels. That'll send us to the other end for free throws for the Blue Jays as we, hey, you can hear the, the thump of body hitting the floor there. Talk about Big East physicality. And there it was. And Olivia Ilger on the tough end of that, but now she goes to the free throw line with a chance to put Creighton back ahead. Again, 25 to four. Seton Hall have outscored the Blue Jays in this second quarter, and free throw won't go down. 24 to four, Creighton after one quarter. 25 to four, Seton Hall so far in the second. We'll watch basketball for a long time between seeing two quarters more diametrically opposed to each other. What we've seen here so far today. So a second free throw coming for Olivia Elger to at least tie the score. Creighton, real need of some kind of spark suddenly. That one bounces in, and it's 29 each. Your 
Creighton, you just want to get to the half now. Tied, hopefully, and regroup for the third quarter. I don't think Seton Hall want this quarter to end. No, what a half of basketball. Faloxi takes the two. It was much too strong. Chance for the Jays to grab the lead again. And that's back to what Creighton did in the first quarter. Limiting easy chances for Seton Hall, holding a post player to a 15 footer. That's exactly what you want. Good pass under the rim. Elger steps around a defender and puts it through. There's not a better player coming off the bench in the Big East Conference than Olivia Elger, in my opinion. She is so silky smooth in her game. So Creighton with three points in a row to steady the ship from their perspective. Winters hands off to Jimenez. And Filoxi trying to back down a defender, and she scores. Filoxi over Andre Faber, ties it at 31. Tony Bazella calls her a pillar of the future of his program, just a freshman. Here's a corner three from Elger. She was fouled. Count it. Plus a free throw. And it's the third foul on Deja Winters. Well, what a big play there. And yet again, it's Olivia Elger sparking the Blue Jays. That's a bad foul by Deja Winters. Long after the ball was gone. Just overzealous and trying to close out late. As he said, her third foul. That's a damaging play for Seton Hall. Yeah, you can't give her any space. It is a four-point play. And suddenly, Creighton back to a four-point lead. Elger led Creighton, rather was the second leading scorer with 16 in the first meeting. More of the same here in this half, and she's got 10. Nine-second differential between game and shot clock. Lucina dribbling a lot of that clock down. Now Healy just on the floor for Seton Hall. Hand off to Jackson, shot clock to five. Jackson, little crossover, kicks it out. Jimenez takes a three and knocks it down at the end of the shot clock. We said Nicole Jimenez has no conscience. She didn't need one there. One point game, final seconds of the half. Will they get the three off? They will. Short, Elger, not this time. What a half of basketball. Are we having fun yet? We are. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know if either coaches are. No. 35-34 Creighton at the half. A 20-point Creighton lead disappeared. Seton Hall took a one-point advantage. It's Creighton in front by one at the half. Back with our halftime report. After this, lots to talk about on the Big East Digital Network.
some halftime entertainment here at DJ Sokol Arena. We had plenty of entertainment in the first half as it was. 35-34, Creighton leading Seton Hall. As we take a look at our first half highlights, John Fanta, we're going to see a lot of Creighton scoring from the first quarter, then a lot of Seton Hall scoring from the second. What a swing in momentum we've seen already. And it all started with the Jays' defense. They really limited what Seton Hall could do offensively in the first quarter, and then turn into six different players hitting threes. Olivia Elger turning it on, but then things swung, and the Pirates got on the move. They certainly did. It was 24 to 4 Creighton after one quarter. Seton Hall surged back with a 25 to 4 run to start the second quarter. And at one point, they grab a 29 28 lead. And to lead the way, it was Kwani Jackson. And then shots like that. There's nothing you can do if you're Creighton's defense. Nicole Jimenez getting the Pirates with him one. A 30 point second quarter. And Seton Hall has 34 points in the first half. Creighton only allowed 39 to St. John's on Friday, and it looked like we were in for another one of those after the first quarter of this game, but somehow the Pirates have woken up. They sure have. I think the key stat there is the turnovers, because Seton Hall turned it over six times in that miserable first quarter for them. They only turned it over once in that outstanding second quarter. Game on in Omaha, and there's a reason why. Only one game separates these two teams in the Big East standings. They're both in the top half of the conference. We are in for quite the final 20 minutes. And we'll have that third quarter for you right after this. Big East women's basketball is right here on the Big East Digital Network. Alright, that's fine. <laughs> John, I'll just tee you up real quick to talk about the tournament then. Providence led that game 67 to 50. <laughs> um, Providence just beats... We're just over a month away from crowning a new Big East Tournament champion. John, why don't you tell them about that Big East Women's Basketball Tournament coming up in March. March 3rd to the 6th at the brand new Wintrust Arena in Chicago. DePaul now playing their home games in Chicago after being in Rosemont for many years. Go to DePaulBlueDemons.com to get your tickets. Go to BigEast.com for Championship Central and for the standings throughout the season. It's all leading up to the Women's Basketball Tournament first week of March. It's going to be fantastic in Chicago at a state-of-the-art facility. Should be a lot of fun. And what state will these two teams be in by the time they reach that tournament? That's to be determined as the Blue Jays came into this game leading Seton Hall by one game in the Big East standings. Creighton 6-4, and four, Seton Hall 5-5. Five and five. Again, both teams playing well of late with Creighton having won their last two, three of their last four. Seton Hall have won three straight and four of their last five. So we said something had to give here today. Initially, it looked like Seton Hall would be doing the giving because they were down 24 to 4 after the first quarter. It swung dramatically in quarter number two as Seton Hall grabbed the 29-28 lead before Creighton steadied themselves and rallied a bit down the stretch. The defensive intensity of these two teams completely changed. It's almost like the court got tipped from the first to the second. So who can keep that intensity going in a Sunday afternoon game where you're playing your second game in three days, who's got the will in the final 20 minutes to rack up stops? That's what we'll start to find out right now. Sydney Lamberty, ball handling for Creighton, who possess it first to begin this second half. Again, Creighton in the white, trimmed in blue. Seton Hall, the blue tops and bottoms. Here's a three from the left side, well short. Easy rebound, skips into the hands of Shadeen Samuels. Coach Mazzella told us pregame he's willing to give up the threes in doses. Well, they gave up six of them in the first quarter, but Creighton stopped hitting them in the second. Seton Hall seek that lead again. They only led once briefly in the first, and they lead again here. Shadeen Samuels had the rebound at one end, hits the bucket at the other. 36-35 Pirates. Coach always says, we'll pick our poison with something. Well, Jim Flannery's willing to give up the 15 quarter of Samuels, and this time she makes the pay. Here 
There's a three for Melman in and out. In these rims, a little bit firm. Those balls not falling through on those second bounces. So Look at the ball. screen and roll action here. Yeah, good little action there for Butina, who hits again. Butina had 10 in the first half. Give her 12 now. Largest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Simplistic, but works so well. Ball screen offense that Seton Hall loved to run. Norby left open, up fakes, chooses not to take the shot. Moved around the horn. Agnew, out for a three from the left side, no. Faber couldn't knock it down, but knocked out of the hands of a Pirate. Another three, that goes down for Jalen Agnew. What a big swing there, just as it looked like Seton Hall were gonna get it back up three, now we're tied again. You don't expect either of these teams to fold. They are dead even in the early stages of the third. Jackson pivots and shoots off to the right, and Norby boxes out for the board. Creighton look for that lead again. Baseline drive by Faber. Dangerous pass back out to Melman. And then it's Lamberty. Faber. Lamberty once more. Norby the long two, yes, five in a row for Creighton now to take a 40 to 38 lead. How good has Bailey Norby been today? Has only played eight minutes, but six points, three rebounds, and assists. That's senior leadership on display in the scoring column. She's doing it all right now. Her jumper game is strong. Kimmy Evans, Jackson, all the way under, blocked from behind by Norby, got it back. And then missed again. Crowd wanted to travel. On the run, Norby catches, waits, missed it short, got her own rebounds, knocked out of her hands. Now they go to the floor and a foul called on Seton Hall's Inya Butina, who does not agree. Tough situation here. Seton Hall swarming her. I don't know how they didn't end up with the ball. But it's Bailey Norby's intensity level. She brought it from the tip. And to come up with the block, it's very underrated for a center to get back on defense and stop a player as good as Jaquan Jackson at the rim. Oh, Faber trying to interchange with Allie Green under the hoop and missed. And turned it over to Seton Hall. So the Pirates, led by as many as three very briefly early in this quarter. Trailed by as many as 20. Now down two. Double screen action. Butina right down the gut. Lays it in to tie it up at 40. There's nothing Creighton can do right now with the ball screens. And when you have guards as good as Butina and Jackson who are in a groove, it's tough. Here comes Faber off the heel of the rim. Rebound scrambled for and claimed by Jackson. Seton Hall seek the lead again. Samuels takes the three, too strong. And the Jays perfectly content to let her shoot from there. That's the only part of her game that's missing, Johnny. She's been really good defensively again. Audrey Faber only three points. That's because of Shadeen Samuels, who held her to five in the first meeting. Agnew on the right wing. Looking for somebody to give it to, contested pass to Elger. Shot clock to four. Now a baseline two, yes. Nice calmness by Allie Green as the shot clock was expiring to give Creighton a two-point lead. Extra passing at its finest. Creighton's offense is so fun to watch. Those were Green's first points of the afternoon. Here goes Butina again. Kicking it out for a wide open three from Samuels. Excuse me, that's Kwani Jackson. 43-42, Seton Hall. 16 now for Jackson today. Contested pass. Moved around the horn to Agnew, then Lamberty. She takes the three. Short, but an offensive board. Allie Green. Jays can reset. And they take the lead back. Jalen Agnew from straightaway. All because of an extra opportunity. 
Creighton, nine offensive rebounds today. Seton Hall, two. Blue Jays are doing work on the glass, which is the number one area that Jim Flannery wanted to see improvement on. His team has answered the bell again today. It was one of the things that Tony Pazella on the other side said they had to do better today than in their first meeting. So those offensive rebounds killed us last time. Jackson, not this time. Ooh, almost a steal under the rim now, but now the Jays can break. They outnumber the Pirates. Will it lead to an open look? Agnew doesn't care. She misses long. Rebounds hustled for. Here's Jackson. Open look from the right side. Satan Hall back in front. Deja Winters. There's nobody better in this league in transition and getting shots like that than Seton Hall. Under the rim, Lamberty wide open, missed the lay-in, but was fouled by a rapidly closing Inya Butina. Butina's picked up a couple fouls this quarter. And that'll take us to our under five minute timeout. Creighton will be at the line trying to grab the lead again when we come back. Back and forth they go at DJ Sokol Arena. 46-45 Seton Hall here on the Big East Digital Network. Nice. How about Georgetown? They've really turned it on. I got it here. Three, uh... Yeah, hold on. I'm getting it up for you quickly here. There you go. 44-24. Georgetown, they had a really bad start to conference play. Back at Sokol Arena, let's look at some other scores from around the Big East. Two really close games, and then one that surprisingly isn't very close, John. The biggest surprise on this graphic is Providence taking down St. John's. The Friars get a season sweep over the Red Storm. That is wild, considering they came into today's game at 1-9 and in Big East play. Their two wins have come over St. John's, a St. John's team that had gone five and four against everybody else. Now the Johnnies are five and six as a result. That makes this game here all that much more important for conference positioning. Villanova getting it done over Butler. The Wildcats now seven and four in the league and in the top tier. Now Butler five and six. Seton Hall at five and five, Donnie. They made a ball game of this, which they're fortunate to be making. And that gives them a huge chance, and it's also an opportunity here at Sokol for Creighton to continue to establish itself as that top four team in the Big East. Yeah, Creighton trying to keep pace with Villanova at seven and four if they could pull this game out. That is all very much to be decided, though. And it was Creighton by 20 after the first quarter. And then they've traded leads ever since Seton Hall grabbed a 29-28 lead with a couple minutes left in the second. To your point about the conference scores, Georgetown now on its way to its third win in its last four games. One of those is over Marquette. It's the only loss the Golden Eagles have. Hoyas are coming on, too. There are just no easy games in this conference. No. No. Look at today, man. I mean, we, we were talking about it at half. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this game. No. Thought we were maybe going to see a blowout after that first quarter. Turned out to be anything but. One point Creighton lead is. Sidney Lamberty sank both free throws. Here come the Pirates now. Great feed to Philoxy, who blew the layup. Boy, Samuels found her with that nice little skip pass, and Philoxy just about all alone. Could not put it down. See if the Jays can take advantage of that. Agnew 
Lamberty. And a pass intercepted by Butina, running the floor one on one. And handing off for the finish from Shadeen Samuels. Seven assists for Butina. That is court vision excellence right there, and another turnover. Travel called on Creighton as Timmy Sarda shuffled her feet. Here's Butina. What a find that is. Looking off the defender. And then at the last moment, slipping it to Samuels. Tony Bazella said it. It's been a surprise of just how great Butina's impact has been. Well, you highlighted her as the key player to watch for Seton Hall before this game. That was a great call by you, John Fanta. Once in a while, we get something right. <laughs> Here's a bank shot that rattles in as Samuels makes it a three-point lead for Seton Hall, matching their largest of the day. And I think for Jim Flannery right now, he's more concerned about scoring the basketball. Creighton's gone cold. They just, they're not finding anything easy. Lamberty trying to probe that defense, but as you said, since that first quarter, not a lot has been easy on offense for Creighton. Now in the lane, that's short, but it's a foul. Timmy Sarda will shoot free throws. That is the third on Samuels, and that's significant. She's played very well. She's up to 10 points, Shadeen Samuels. So a couple players in foul trouble now for Seton Hall. Sarda swirls in the first. So three players in double figures for the Pirates. Jackson with 16, Butina now with 12, Samuels has 10. Olivia Elger is the only Blue Jay in double figures with 10. Agnew and Lamberty, nine each. Sarda now has six, seeking her seventh of the day. She made material progress throughout the season. She hits them both. Blue Jays are generally a very good free throw shooting team. Today they are eight of 10 from the charity stripe. Seton Hall have only shot two free throws all afternoon, but they still lead by a point despite those couple there by Sarda. Routina, a little jab step. And in the post, Samuels with her three fouls. Doesn't matter, she rolls it home. 52-49 Pirates. That's a coaching adjustment. Tony Bazella known as Samuels hasn't been as effective catching it on the elbow, but Jalen Agnew answer it. Jalen Agnew knots it up at 52. You just want to sit back and watch and enjoy. Because it is enjoyable. Samuels is bumped and fouled by Agnew with 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Only her first foul, but all four of Agnew's field goals have been threes. And she has struggled from beyond the arc. She was one of eight from three against Xavier on Monday. But today, turning it on. Screen there for Butina. And Kwani Jackson has actually been fairly quiet in this third quarter, but she has 16 for the game. Forced out above the elbow. A little pass to Filoxi, who misses, but is fouled. Filoxi, little hook shot there, forcing it up, draws contact. Selena Filoxi, a freshman from Queens. Only listed at 6-1. Yeah, and I talked to Tony Bazella earlier this week about Filoxi and Kenny Evans, the two freshman posts. They've really been inserted into key roles on this team, but he's loved the way that they've bought in. Filoxi is now just three of 11 from the foul line this year. So she hasn't shot many, and she's struggled when she has. Again, just a freshman. Misses them both. Creighton seek the lead once more. Head fake by Melman. Lamberty, Agnew, Faber. Faber again inside the final minute, turned over. Here comes Jimenez, she lost it. Sarda, still loose, Faber from her back. Throws it along, here's Lamberty closing in. Under the rim, count it, plus a foul. A mad 
scramble at midcourt. Creighton prevail eventually. And how well did they execute this fast break? It's all hustle. And it's Lamberty coming up at the right place, right time. And even more importantly, that is the fourth foul on Shadeen Samuels, who has been so huge in this effort for the Pirates. And Tony Bozella livid that there was no call at center court. He felt that his team was fouled a couple times during that scramble, but situations like that, you're not going to get fouls called very often, are you? Nor alone in a conference game. Everybody's going for the basketball. It's a scrum. That's how it is. And what an effort by Creighton. Gutsy. Turns into a three-point play for Sidney Lamberty. These are haymakers back and forth by these two teams. Now Samuels is to the bench with her four fouls. Big part of Seton Hall's rally today. Ooh, Creighton called for a foul there. Serta stepping in front of Philoxy trying to go for the steal. We'll take another look at it. That was the third team foul on Creighton of the quarter, so the ball will be out of bounds. Now here does Tony Bazella hold it for the last shot. Looks like he will. Bertina circling toward that Creighton logo at center court. Dribbling clock down. Shot clock is off. Bertina with 12 points, five rebounds, nine assists. Looking to drive, gets her way under the hoop, draws a foul on Faber. That's the fourth foul on Creighton. They had one left to give. That was Faber's third, so 6.4 seconds on the clock. And all have got to get it in, they do. Philoxy, tough shot, left it short, tipped out to Butina at the buzzer, short. And that's the end of the third quarter. So, Creighton led by a point at halftime. They lead by three at the end of three. What do these two teams have for us in the fourth quarter? We'll find out next. What a Big East women's basketball game we have today here on the Big East Digital Network. No, we're good. Back at Omaha, Creighton scored the final six points of that third quarter to give themselves a three-point lead over Seton Hall as we enter the final 10 minutes of regulation here today. Tony Barnes along with John Fanta. And last night, the Creighton men's team, just a couple blocks from here, played the annual pink out game. And what an atmosphere it was, John. Creighton versus cancer, over 18,000 people. They're the ninth largest crowd at the CenturyLink Center. Creighton men's basketball history, and look at those special jerseys. They auction those off to families and those impacted by breast cancer. There you see Marcus Foster getting presented with his 1,000-point ball for the Creighton Blue Jays. Nearly $30,000 raised in that auction. Such a special night. Creighton men's basketball 
is such an integral part of this community and Creighton Athletics overall. You look at the crowds they get and to come together for breast cancer awareness, what a cause, what a night. What a day we've had so far here today, meanwhile, at Sokol, 55-52 Creighton at Seton Hall ball to start the fourth quarter. As they look to halt this little 6-0 run the Blue Jays put together at the end of the third. Can Creighton's defense find the intensity it had in the first quarter to keep Seton Hall from the drive off those screen and rolls? And there goes Butina. She's been so integral to the Pirates' attack today. That one missed by Evans. Rebound chased down. Back to Butina. Fresh shot clock for the Pirates. Now Jackson, three ball, banks it in. Kwani Jackson, I doubt she called that. She and her teammates couldn't care less. We're tied again. A game this good, Banks gonna be open on a Sunday. Faber answers right back for Creighton. Holy cow. This game is so, so, so good. It's only January. <laughs> it feels like March, doesn't it? Jackson, who has 19 now in the game to lead all scores. Butina, who has 12. Evans in the post, knocked out of her hands. Bounces favorably for Satan Hall, right to Deja Winter. Shot clock down to eight. Jackson wants a screen, gets one. Step back three. Not this time. Butina gets the rebound, though. Fights her way out of traffic. Crowd screaming for a travel. And now Butina will try to calm things down. Tina gets a screen from Winters. Circling toward the top of the key. Then Jackson, shot clock inside 10 again. Jackson lost it right to Butina. Butina gonna make something happen. Step back two from the elbow, yes! Butina makes it a one point game and a timeout <laughs> called by Seton Hall. The only game this wizard was Tony Bazella flying in for one of those timeouts after a bucket. <laughs> we'll take a timeout too. Catch our breath, 8.14 still to go. Lots more to come on the Big East Digital Network. Cynthia Petke, all right. Okay. All right. I'll let you talk about them after I. Cool. Them That's out perfect. Now. This is nuts. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> One-point lead for Creighton as this heavyweight battle continues at Sokol Arena. It's time to look at our Big East Players of the Week. And this week in the Big East, Player of the Week, Cynthia Petke. I guess when you average 25 a game, you should win that award, John. Petke was a machine last week. Not only did she average 25 per game, but almost a double-double. And the two games that Georgetown played last weekend against Marquette and DePaul, the top two teams in the conference. So she was averaging about a double-double against two of the best in the country. And for freshman of the week, this is really quite the, the year for freshman of the year. There's not really a standout player. But Chanel Williams, she's the one who really is the traffic cop for Providence, knows how to initiate as their point guard, only a rookie. But I love her pace. Good recruit for Jim Crowley. Meanwhile, 8.14 to go in this one. And how many more swings and momentum are we going to see? 
plenty, you suspect. We've already had eight ties and ten lead changes over the first 32 minutes. Again, Creighton led by 20 after the first quarter. Creighton looking to expand on this one-point lead. Millman back out to Lamberty. Lamberty looking for a screen. Not much of one in the end. Mismatch. Elger gets herself to the rim, left it short, wanted the foul, none called. Seton Hall running to the opposite end, and a bad pass there. A rare bad one by Inya Butina. Again, six turnovers in the first quarter for Seton Hall. That was just their ninth of the game, so just three turnovers since the first. Both teams have taken care of the ball pretty well this afternoon. Creighton still hanging on to that one-point lead, have the ball back. And in a game where Audrey Faber's been held to just six points, who steps up for Creighton? Here is Faber, swinging it to the left for a three. That's much too strong. Here's Jimenez, charging the other way, skipping it to Winters, who fumbled it out of bounds as she tried to finish. Boy, Deja Winters, she'll want that one back. Maybe thinking about that defender that was closing down from behind. Couldn't keep the handle on it as she went up. Still a one-point Creighton lead. Lamberty triggering to Melman. Faber. And from the corner, Lamberty. Shot clock inside 10 again. Agnew. Kept moving for Lamberty, shot clock to three, tipped out of bounds, just two seconds on the shot clock. And this struggling from Creighton's offense is a result of Faber not really having any room to score. Long inbounds uh -oh. to Faber, got to get it off. She does, or did she? No, nope. shot clock oh, violation. Oh, yeah. Faber having to catch that while almost falling out of bounds across the baseline, and by the time she steadied herself, the shot clock had expired. It's close. Yeah, it was the right design. In a late game situation, Creighton's ability to get open looks off an inbounds is so good. It's why they've been great in overtime games this year. Yeah, they've already played in four of them. That's a new school record for a single season. We could see another one here today. Neither team scored in the last two minutes. Butina wants to change that, but you can't. Rebound to Agnew. Elger, Faber, no. It's tipped out of bounds by Winters, though, it appeared. Creighton ball. It's important to note, these two teams playing the Sunday afternoon game, second game in three days. There's no more timeouts, expanded timeouts. Yeah, some tired legs out there. Foul called on Jimenez. Trying to fight through a screen and stay with the cutting Agnew. It's another one of those good inbounds plays for Creighton. That is the first foul of this quarter. So Creighton take it out of bounds again. Still leading by a single point. Lamberty dumps it in the low post. Agnew. Now Melman. No. Open look. Offensive rebound. Filoxi the block with the foul. There's another one of those key offensive boards. It was Lamberty, and that's the 10th offensive rebound for Creighton this afternoon. And Lamberty just better positioning. See, Hall really didn't have anybody there. She's a terrific free throw shooter. She sinks the first one without incident. Yeah, Lamberty. Is at over 80% coming into this game. And here's Shadeen Samuels now. Six minutes on the clock, four fouls. Yeah, Tony Bazella deciding he can wait no longer. Puts her back in the game as Creighton expand their lead to three. Crowd sensing the urgency there at Sokol. Seton Hall led by as many as three at one point in the third quarter. It didn't last long. Winters off a screen. In and out. Boy, that looked good. 
Now along the baseline, Filoxi puts it back up and will shoot free throws. There's a big offensive board for Seton Hall this time. They've not had many today. The seventh rebound of the game for Filoxi. She was tremendous against St. John's last Sunday. Was all over the glass and keeps it going here this afternoon. It's tied for the team high. You see Seton Hall scoreless in the last two and a half. Now they need Filoxi to hit a free throw, which she struggled to do this year, and she misses again. She's now three for 13 at the line this season. She's been too long on all three of her attempts today. It can start to get in your head. Again, just a freshman. Tons of potential. And again, too long. Missed them both. Lamberty the box out. Crowd again screaming for a foul. They are really, it's cliche, but it's true. They are really letting them play in this fourth quarter. Big East physicality. You said it early. We've seen it plenty of times today. There's a foul, though. It's Elger was sent sprawling. Second foul of the quarter on the Pirates. And both teams safe in that regard with the team fouls with 5.31 on the clock. I don't mind the officials letting them play and letting them decide it, though. That makes for just a more appetizing game. As if this game hasn't been appetizing enough. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Jay's hungry for a five-point lead. Agnew can't make it so. Samuels with the board. It's still just a one-possession contest. Butina has a shot at a triple-double today. Winters, ooh, dangerous pass. Loose, Filoxi tied up. Arrow is in Creighton's favor. Blue Jay basketball. It's now over three minutes without a point for Seton Hall. They're hanging in with their defense, but they're going through a scoring drought. They're going to need a three because they're not getting anything inside. Creighton has returned to its defensive intensity level that it had in the first quarter. Oh, there's a turnover, though, and Winters is fouled. And a foul this time committed by Elger. And that will bring us to our final media timeout of the day. 4.57 to go in the fourth quarter. Creighton 60, Seton Hall 57. Back for the finish after this on BETN. Sensational, scintillating. <laughs> cool. Okay. It's a three-point lead for Creighton with inside five minutes to go here at Sokol Arena. I'm Donnie Barnes. He's John Fanta. John, what a game we have seen here this afternoon. Creighton breaks out to a 20-point lead after the first quarter, but then Seton Hall turned the tides. So exciting to see what they do out in transition, and that's how they changed the game. And it's been back and forth ever since. you got to think these final five minutes or so come down to who can pair up the stops. Creighton's done that thus far in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how does Seton Hall find that offensive momentum again, the way they were rolling in the second and third quarters? It's got to come through the three-point ball because Seton Hall's not getting much down low. And while Filoxi and Evans, those post players, are both very versatile and, and growing, Seton Hall's got to get it done through Jaquan Jackson. She's going to have to hit a big-time shot. you got to think down the stretch in this game. It's got to come from beyond the arc. We talked about how tough the schedule is in this Big East Conference. The upcoming schedule for the Seton Hall Pirates looks like this, John. And that's why today is so critical for the Pirates. Because if you can get a win here in Omaha, then Xavier and Butler are two teams that you have to think Seton Hall could have a lot of momentum going into those games. They can get out of there with two wins. They really can. That would 
give the Pirates a ton of momentum for the home stretch. So there's a level of opportunity here that Seton Hall hasn't had thus far in conference play. How about Creighton? Oh, boy. That is as tough of a weekend as you're going to get in this league, going to DePaul and Marquette. But then after that, things do ease up a little bit. They just have the one-game weekend. They're going to need that for their strength. I like the bye there, sandwiched in before hosting Xavier and Butler. So the Jays are going to be right in the middle of this league. I could see them in the 3-6 game, the 4-5 game in the conference tournament. Seton Hall with the basketball down three. Butina almost traveled. Now it's slipped to Filoxi. She'll go back to the line. I think Creighton are determined not to let Filoxi score the ball. Put her on the line, just like Shaquille O'Neal 15 years ago. <laughs> She's missed all four of her attempts today. And this time, Butina pulling Filoxi aside. was Faber on the foul, and she has fouled out. That was her fifth. My goodness. And Jim Flannery is not happy about it. Only six points. Yeah, quiet day by her standards. Taking a while to get a substitute in. Now it's Bailey Norby. And boy, talked about some big minutes, some big points for her in the first half. They're going to need to be need her to be even bigger here down the stretch now. It's like bringing the pinch hitter off the bench. And you just got that feeling that they're going to come up big. Norby's done that throughout the day. Beautiful stroke there by Filoxi, meanwhile. The message from Butina worked out. She goes one for two. Now the rebound fought for. The arrow is in Seton Hall's favor this time. Good hustle by Deja Winters. And Seton Hall, the tie or take the lead. Look for Seton Hall to get something beyond the three-point arc here off the inbounds. Inbounded to Samuels, then Butina. Jackson circling behind her. Jackson was closed out by Agnew, though. And then Agnew knocks it out of her hands. Jackson gets it back. And Seton Hall can reset. They had it nearly with Jackson. Yeah. Creighton sniffed it out, though, and defended it well. Now Butina slips it to Filoxi, who missed the lay-in. And then another tied-up ball. It'll be the Blue Jays this time who have it. Eli Filoxi showing some freshman inexperience there. All alone under the rim. It was like she had too much time and too much space. Jays, Norby off. It's a five-guard lineup. So Norby right back to the bench. And now the ball tipped and stolen by Samuels. Seton Hall get it right back, still down just two. With Filoxi struggling to finish, Donnie, it's got to come through the three-point shot. You just get that gut feeling. Samuel, she'll drive the lane. Tough runner, no. Filoxi the board. Recycle back out to Jackson for three. That's off the mark. Another rebound. Winters is fouled. No. Oh, did she travel? They're going to consult now. One referee called a foul. The other called a travel. What's the decision? It is a foul. Oh, that's a huge call. We'll take a look at it. It's just a toss-up call. Now, Seton Hall have not hit a field goal <laughs> in four and a half minutes. They've really struggled, and yet they're still within two. And they have the ball. Creighton are out of fouls, by the way. That was their fourth. Seton Hall had three this quarter. Lutina, Jackson gets the screen from Filoxi. Not much of one. Uh, corner two, no. Seton Hall, ice cold from the floor. Creighton hanging on to that lead. Both teams struggling to score down the stretch. Three and a half to go. Neither team has had a big shot maker. You're just waiting for it, and you feel like it's coming for the Jays. Lamberty. Now the drive on Filoxi. Beats her and lays it in. You need the senior to step up. That's exactly what she did. A four-point Creighton lead. And a timeout called by Tony Buzella. I believe this is the first time that either team has had more than a one possession lead in this second half. So we'll take a look at Lamberty's dribble drive. It's capitalizing off the mismatch. She gets Filoxi off balance. 
and the calming presence of Sydney Lamberty. Nothing overly pretty, just does her job and does it so well. And it's tough for her this year. I was talking to people around the Creighton program. She was so used to being maybe that star 1A alongside Marissa Janning. Janning was really the one with the ball, but now Lamberty has had to take over being that primary one, being that primary star, being the one who finishes late for Creighton. And in that sequence right there, that's exactly what you want from your leader if you're Jim Flannery, making plays like that to close out these pivotal conference games. Still so much time on the clock, though. Let's see what Coach Pazella has drawn up. And five minutes without a field goal for Seton Hall. They need one now in the worst way. Butina thought about the three, didn't take it. Inside the final three minutes now, Jackson. Jackson defended well, forced it up anyway, way short. More good defense by Creighton. Jackson has 19, but she's not scored in a while. I'm telling you, they're not getting anything in the lane. It's going to have to come off some three-point shooting. Lamberty taking some time off the clock, being swiped at by Filoxi. Two and a half to go. Agnew. In and out, no. Offensive rebound. Timeout called by Creighton. There's another one of those big offensive boards. This time it was Allie Green grabbing it with 2.20 to go. So Creighton 62, Seton Hall 58. And again, this offensive drought for Seton Hall has coincided with one for Creighton. Creighton have not been able to put this game away because they've hit just one of their last seven field goals. So in this game, the two teams have combined to go one for their last 16. Seton Hall with just one point in the last five minutes plus. It's still just a four-point deficit. Creighton with that big offensive board will have the ball out of this timeout, still with 28 on the shot clock. Just a quick 30-second timeout there. Creighton still have two timeouts remaining. Seton Hall are down to one. A possession arrow favors Seton Hall. That's Lamberty to inbound for the Blue Jays from the baseline. Under the rim to Agnew, who circles it back out. Into the hands of Sarda. And Lamberty, who leads the Blue Jays with 16 points today. She's going to take as much time off the clock as possible here. Down to two minutes. Now Lamberty, a little crossover. Wings it out to the left, gets it back. Into the lane, Lamberty hangs and scores! Four straight for Sydney Lamberty. She catches Falazzi in the mismatch situation again and gets a wide open lane. Now Seton Hall's need for a bucket is desperate. Jackson, again well defended. Butina trying to make something happen. In the lane, jump stop and score. Butina. Has 14, make it 16 today. They almost steal it in the backcourt. Crowd roaring for a foul again. Now it's loose and an offensive foul. Called on Elger, stepping in front of Winters. And it's a loose ball foul, so that forces Seton Hall to the line. That puts them at the free throw line. Right, Creighton over the limit. It should be free throws, shouldn't oh, it? Oh, that's free throws. We're going to have them take the ball out here. That's five team fouls on Creighton, isn't it? There's confusion here. What is going on? So the ball inbounded by Seton Hall. Butina drives under the rim. No foul there. Samuels blocked from behind. Huge defensive play. Creighton up four as we close in on the final minute. Sarda trapped in the corner. She'll take a timeout. 56.8 seconds left. Let's look at this block from behind. Clean block by Agnew. What a play. Swatting Samuels and avoiding the foul. Tremendous defense by Jalen Agnew. Creighton's defensive intensity has been really good to start and close this game. Time and again when Seton Hall has tried to get through the lane, they just haven't been able to make it happen. 
And you got to defend Seton Hall off the ball screens, which can get taxing and can be really tough over the course of four quarters. But today, Creighton has stood tall in the lane with their defense. And the Pirates just haven't been able to get going from the perimeter in this fourth quarter. It's been great defense by the Jays on Jaquan Jackson in particular. Yeah, Jackson's been smothered in this fourth quarter. He's 19, but hasn't scored in a long time. Inbounded to Agnew. 15 on the shot clock, stolen by Seton Hall, Shadeen Samuels. Now Butina, Jimenez. Winters takes the three, it's blocked. Loose into the rim. And a foul called on Creighton as Jackson found the loose ball and will go to the line. That is incredible court vision by Jackson. And it's not giving up on the play. Look at her. Dashing past Sarda. That's a senior versus a freshman in that instance. And the senior wins out. Yeah, Sarda did not box out there. And Jackson. Tremendous free throw shooter. Looked like it there to reduce the deficit to three with one more coming. 28 of 30 on the year entering these free throws. Make it 29 of 31. It's a two-point game with 40.4 seconds left. The new Seton Hall weren't going away. Now they contest the inbound pass. Creighton just get it inbounds and a foul called on Creighton. They were looking for the tie-up and they have the arrow. Their coaching staff leaping off their bench. Couldn't believe there was no tie-up called. And now they're going to consult. And we get a timeout here by Jim Flannery. That's the last timeout for Creighton today. Did they give them the timeout before the tie-up? Did they call the foul? Uh, I didn't see a tie-up there. They did call the foul. That's a timeout, and that's a good call. That's not a foul. Under no circumstances, that a foul. And I know that the fans are not happy with it, but Donnie, she turns around, she calls a timeout. The official put up the hand as if it were a foul, right. but it was a timeout okay. call. And there's not jump ball there, because let's look at it again. At what point is there shared possession here? There's never a point. Yeah. There's never a point where Seton Hall has the ball as well. She calls a timeout, yep. that's it, and here we go. So that's the last timeout for Creighton. Again, Seton Hall still have one remaining. And that arrow, that possession arrow, is still pointing Seton Hall's way. Could come into play here in the last 36 seconds. And the number one thing for Seton Hall is to not give Sidney Lamberty the lane. Yeah, well, let's remember Creighton are out of fouls, so Seton Hall's in the bonus. Uh, Seton Hall still have a foul to give. That's big. You can be extra aggressive. Try to get that steal, and they've had Plenty of them today again. They've had eight. They average around 11 per game. Yeah, but especially a couple times here down the stretch, they've been able to pressure Creighton into some turnovers to keep themselves in this contest. Both teams have struggled to score in this final quarter. In fact, the combined score in this final quarter, 10 to 9 Seton Hall. So points have been tough to come by. Ball will be inbounded in the backcourt by Creighton's Temi Sarda. Seton Hall. Will press. Sometimes you see a team send somebody long. Contested inbounds pass caught by Lamberty. Tie up called. Seton Hall ball. Unbelievable. Creighton was seamless, seamless against the press from Seton Hall in the first meeting. Oh, how times have changed. And now the Pirates could tie or take the lead. Said it before, Creighton's cut off the lane. You got to think it's going to come through the three point shot. This is Butina. There's a two second differential between game and shot clock. Lob it in the post. Samuels, Butina driving the lane to Samuels. Tie game. And what do we have now? Creighton don't show a timeout left. Do they, is this a substitution timeout? Well, this gives them a free timeout, Donnie. Now well, they're reviewing something at the monitor. And boy, Tony Bozella is going berserk. He was. Now he's calmed himself down. He was incensed that Creighton are being essentially granted a free timeout here. It's a 6 0 run by Seton Hall after they trailed 64 58 with less than 90 seconds remaining. What a comeback again by the Pirates, who trailed by as many as 20 after the first quarter. 
Were they reviewing to see how much time was on the clock? Yeah. It turns out to be a great situation for both these teams. They don't have to burn the time out. They can reset. And I've talked about it before. Jim Flannery on an inbounds play. Yeah. And the chance to draw one up. Again, Seton Hall forced the tie up last time. Now the arrow is in Creighton's favor. And again, Creighton out of timeout. So if they can't get this ball in, they can't call one. It will be Elger to inbound this time for the Blue Jays. 64 each with 18.8 to go. Elger inbounds to Agnew. Elger again. She's under pressure. Throws it in the front court. Creighton can break. Intercepted by Jackson. Seton Hall could win it here. Five seconds left. Jackson front court. Butina with three. Butina the pull up jumper. Short. We're going to overtime. Oh, Butina had a chance to win it and left it short. And we will have bonus basketball in Omaha this afternoon. 40 minutes, not enough to separate these two teams. For a fifth time, Creighton will play an extra session, and we'll have it for you when we come back on the Big East Digital Network. Probably talk about Seton Hall, how they closed there over the last two minutes to come back from six down. 64 58. You thought Creighton had finally just about put it away. Yeah, 6 0 over the last minute and 29 seconds. Creighton had four turnovers in the last two minutes as well. We are going to overtime at DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha. Seton Hall and Creighton tied at 64. Donnie Barnes with John Fanta. Seton Hall scored the final six points of regulation. They were down 64-58 with a minute 29 remaining. Creighton turned the ball over four times in those final 90 seconds. It was Seton Hall's defense that made things happen there. And that sends Creighton to their fifth overtime game this season. That is a program record. Yeah, and you've mentioned how good they've been in overtime this year. They won an overtime game just last week. And you talked about the ability to drop inbounds plays is one of the reasons why, but it's Seton Hall who control the tip. And they have it first in the extra session. Martino had that chance to win it at the buzzer. Couldn't quite get it to fall. Now she hangs again, missed it in and out. And a rebound to Creighton. But if Seton Hall gets looks like that in the overtime period, they've got to be happy. Lamberty, who led the Blue Jays with 18 during regulation. I don't remember the last time Creighton had a solid half court possession. Yeah, that's true. Again, four turnovers the last 90 seconds. They didn't have one. Oh, and Agnew almost lost it there. Now Elger, shot clock to four. Elger spinning in the lane. Puts it home, plus a foul. Olivia Elger had to get rid of it, had to make something happen, and boy, did she. Now they called Jackson for the foul there. And what did Bazella tell us pregame? You have to control Olivia Elger. You can't let her control the game. When she drives, the game goes at her pace. Elger missed the free throw, but Agnew the rebound. And wow. Elger takes the three. Bang! Oh Five straight for Olivia Elger to start overtime. She has 15 in the game. And Creighton leads 69-64. Here's Jimenez, too strong, rebound. 
Temi Sarda for the Blue Jays. They look to take control. Again, they led by six with a minute and a half remaining in regulation. This is not over yet, but now they lead by seven as Ellie Green lays it in. Now both teams get a timeout back at the start of overtime and right on cue, Tony Bazzilla will take his timeout right now. He has one still remaining from regulation as well, so one left for Seton Hall, but it's a 7-0 run for Creighton in the first minute and 31 seconds of the bonus session. And after Creighton couldn't score in the final couple minutes, they've gotten that offense working again. They're so unselfish, they do all the little things right. In this game, they've turned it over 16 times, which is very abnormal by Creighton standards. But when the going gets tough, they've got the players to get it done. It's why they're in the upper tier of this conference between Lamberty, Elger, and Agnew. And Jim Flannery told me earlier this season, Olivia Elger just gives us an edge, a different dimension. She's playing at a level so high, and she really is, in my mind, the sixth man of the year in this conference. She's certainly been the sixth man of this overtime. The first five points, the lay-in and the and one, then she missed the free throw, almost like it was a designed play. They get the offensive rebound, shovel it out to her, and she hits a three. This atmosphere is outstanding, by the way. Yeah. And this crowd is a huge reason why Creighton has been able to not only get into the overtime, but to now take this seven point lead. It's one of the best atmospheres that you'll find for women's basketball. And they've had plenty of reason to make noise early in this extra session. And if you're just joining a Seton Hall trailed by 20 after the first quarter. They took a lead in the second. The two teams have traded leads ever since. In fact, we've had 10 lead changes, nine ties. For Seton Hall, watch the inbounder here. Jackson's the inbounder. And oftentimes, Tony Bazella will go back to her on maybe a backdoor screen or something back to the top of the key. But that's what the Pirates need to do. They must score on this possession. And if you do, there's 3.30 on the clock. Yeah. Seton Hall was down four with 90 seconds left in, in regulation. So oftentimes, you'll look at a team scores the first seven, and it feels like they're pulling away. The reason why I won't say that in this instance is because Creighton's had trouble when Seton Hall has pressed them. Yeah. Creighton's, Creighton's got to prove they can get through the full court pressure. Let's look at Elger here with her little burst in these final minutes. It'll be an Elger. Again, possibly the sixth man of the year in this conference. That's such a tough shot at the end of a shot clock. And then misses the free throw. Agnew the rebound, Elger goes right to the wing, wide open, they don't go with her, and she sinks it. Five point possession. Yeah. Those will win you a lot of games in a close one. We'll see if that's enough for Creighton. That's still a lot of time left. Seton Hall, again, they need a bucket. And you think about Kwani Jackson, she hasn't hit a field goal in over 10 minutes. Even though she has 21 points today, they need her now. Listen to this place. It is very loud inside Sokol Arena. Jimenez, tough pass. Butina just claimed it. Now Butina, tough runner, too strong. Big rebound by Agnew. Creighton looking to take command. And then a reach-in foul on Deja Winters. Seton Hall haven't taken many three-pointers. Last half of the fourth quarter and the start of this overtime, they've tried repeatedly to drive that lane. And you keep talking about how well Creighton have defended that lane in that interior. And that's Creighton's strength as a defense. It's now, been the plus all day. Now Olivia Elger goes back to the free throw line. 15 points now today for Olivia Elger, including that five point sequence we just saw. Knocks down the first. All Blue Jays so far in the extra session. Elger makes them both. A 9-0 run for Creighton. Plenty of time. Plenty of time, but points needed in a hurry for Seton Hall. Butina again can't finish. Foul called, though, on the Blue Jays. That's Allie Green called for knocking Shadeen Samuels to the floor. 
2.53 left. And that'll be free throws for Samuels. She's just a sophomore. Samuels, not a good free throw shooter on the year, just 59%. That one bounces out. Samuels just 23 for 40 now at the foul line this season. And Seton Hall, 5 for 11 on the day. Got to hit those free throws, especially on the road. She can't hit either one of them. Nine-point Creighton lead, and they have the ball back. Dagger possession opportunity here. Lamberty. Faber. I'll make that to Agnew, excuse me. Now, Lamberty, a foul called. Does that count? It counts. Lamberty, the three. And a foul. That foul came off the ball. I didn't think the shot would count, but the continuation, why not? Lamberty sinks it and goes to the line. A 12-point lead going on 13. And Creighton. Well, Tony Buzella can't believe that shot counted. He just said, what? As one of the officials came over to talk with him. But it did count. And that one rattles in. It's going to be two free throws here for Lamberty. Wow. So a chance for a... Excuse me, this is uh, Allie Green at the line. She misses the second. So it was Lamberty who made the three. It was Green who shot the free throws because that foul did occur off the ball. So 77-64 Creighton. 2.22 left and a turnover. And the Blue Jays just taking total command in this overtime. And Seton Hall had that chance to win it. That shot right at the buzzer in regulation. Couldn't do it. Now Agnew driving all the way in. And Creighton are cruising now. You're seeing the impact of being down 20 after the first quarter. Seton Hall had the possession at the end of regulation, couldn't finish the game there, and now you're seeing their legs, they're gassed. Yeah, Winters missed there. Samuels trying to save it, could not. Creighton ball. Well, it's been a tremendous effort by both teams, but you know, Seton Hall coming back from 20 down, as you said. And Inya Butina, who's played so well today. She'll be thinking about that chance she had at the end of regulation. And that, as it turns out, probably the best chance Seton Hall we're going to have to win this game. Under the rim, wide open green, lays it in. 17 to nothing. The Blue Jays have outscored the Pirates in overtime. Creighton's defense has been so good. Step back three, Butina. That's an air ball, and that just goes to what you were saying, John. The, the legs are completely gone for Seton Hall. They haven't scored in overtime. 17-0. Yep. That's just insane. And the final score of this game isn't going to reflect the kind of game it was. No. Incredible game for four quarters. Really going back to the end of the third, though, Seton Hall have not been good on offense for the last... Nearly 14 minutes. Boy, Butina almost in tears there on the bench, as you see. It's been an incredible effort by her and her teammates. Seton Hall will be better off because of today. Right, it's the kind of games you're going to have in the Big East. You're not going to win all of them. The league's too good. Blue Jays almost turned that one over. Seton Hall choosing not to foul. Down 17 here as we approach the final minute of overtime. And this Sokol Arena crowd responding. A great effort from their team in this extra session. Shot clock down to five. Here's Lamberty with the floater. No good. Agnew, the offensive rebound. They can dribble another 30 seconds off the clock, and they'll look to do exactly that. And for Creighton, the Jays getting three straight wins after a tough loss at Butler, a game that they fell behind very early in, just could not make the finishing plays. They win at Xavier on Monday, have a short turnaround week, and they beat two gutsy teams in St. John's and Seton Hall. It's a Creighton team that will be dangerous in March because of their shot makers. 
One more chance for Seton Hall with the basketball, trying to at least get on the board in this extra session. Healy just on the floor to Jimenez. Heaves the three, missed it short, that'll do it. Lamberty the rebound and flips it to Olivia Elger. And it's appropriate that it's Elger to close out this game with the ball in her hand. She got the ball rolling in that overtime with that five point possession and Creighton prevail. 81 to 64 over the Seton Hall Pirates today. So Creighton outscores Seton Hall 17 to nothing in the bonus session after we were tied at 64 at the end of regulation. Again, Seton Hall scored the final six in regulation to force overtime. Creighton had a real chance to close it out in normal time, couldn't do so. The Pirates are trailed by 20 after the first quarter, led by as many as three a couple times in the third. But Creighton answered back. And it's Creighton who come away with the victory to improve to seven and four in Big East play. Seton Hall drop to five and six. Blue Jays huddled in their victory formation as we send it over to John Fanta, who is with Blue Jays head coach. Coach Flannery, how did you find a way to get the result? Well, we've been in a lot of overtime games. I just, you know, went, before we went to the overtime, I just said we've been here a lot and, and just find a way. And, you know, Audrey had fouled out. Um, but, uh, you know, Allie Green has done a lot of great things. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes at the end to, to send the game to overtime, but uh, we made a lot of big plays in the overtime. So uh, Seton Hall, um, uh, Tony and his staff have done a really good job of, of kind of re reinventing their, themselves the last couple of weeks. I thought they played that second quarter, they were lights out, um, you know, because we had, had to have a 20 point lead at home after one quarter and, and basically have it be tied at half. You know, it showed a lot on their part. Um, but, uh, you know, it's back and forth in the second half, and, and uh, we've had a lot of close games. So uh, just having experience, having Sydney on the floor makes a huge difference. You told me earlier this season, Olivia Elger is such a spark player. How'd she illustrate that at the start of overtime, Coach? Yeah, she hit the first five points, or six maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but she made a couple big plays. Uh, she's, you know, she's clever with the ball, and, uh, and she's confident, and those things – you know those two things go well together and uh you know she's she's getting healthier we we hope for uh we can keep her healthy because she's obviously a spark for us how about this crowd yeah it was great they, they did a good job uh of uh of helping us out because we were we were up and down today i mean we weren't we weren't good throughout but we had stretches and but i thought they really helped us congratulations okay thanks john donnie Great win for the Blue Jays, 81 to 64 with the Seton Hall Pirates scoring all 17 points in overtime. It was a delicate balancing act for the Jays, but they got it done in the end. We appreciate our entire crew have done a great job today. David Gelder and Joe Willman are our producers this afternoon. We appreciate you joining us. This has been Big East Women's Basketball here on the Big East Digital Network.